Um, I don't know if they're as good as Taylor's. I haven't heard Taylor's rhino stories. I will tell you my very favourite rhino story if you would like to hear it. Would you? You would? Good. Excellent. Okay. Goes a little bit like this. Uh, there I was with Byron and uh, various others, Byron and the other people that were training with him, and we did a rhino walk with a chap called Solomon Mshlongo. And Solly was a very fine tracker. He has uh, unfortunately since passed on, shaken off this mortal coil. But he was a fantastic tracker, and he took us into a rhino sighting. And I had these six trainees, green about the ears as they were at the time, and we tracked this rhino, we couldn't quite see exactly where it was going, and then Solly found the tracks, and we went around onto a termite mine, and he said, this thing's close, it's somewhere around here. And so we climbed up onto the termite mound, and there the rhino was, not 10 meters, that's 30 feet away, just grazing peacefully, white rhino. And so we backed down slowly, very quietly, off the termite mound, and we started to whisper like this, and I said, shut up, don't say anything, don't breathe, hardly move, watch where you put your feet. And then I slapped Byron upside the head and I said, stop telling stupid jokes, this is not the time for it now. And I got us in amongst a bush that was sort of hanging off the side of the mound. And we all very silently crept in, one by one by one. Solly actually said, come, let's go and sit over here. And I thought, oh, it's going to get quite close, but that's what we did, as I trusted him completely. And there we sat, under the sort of shadow of this bush, where we knew the rhino wouldn't try and graze, because there was no grass. And I kept checking the wind with my little sock filled with ash. And the rhino came around, and there were seven of us eight of us packed underneath this little bush and the rhino came around and he got to within probably I'd say four feet at the closest just grazing we could see his lips we could see the wrinkles on his lips and the wrinkles on his nose and we could we could actually see the dust being puffed out every time he breathed just off the top of the grass and we watched his lips grazing away and eventually he lifted his head and he looked he knew something was amiss. It was probably Byron thinking a stupid joke at the time. And then he carried on eating and moved away. And I think we probably sat underneath that bush for about half an hour afterwards, just kind of breathing, trying to appreciate what we'd just witnessed. And when people say, have you ever been in a dangerous situation or have you ever been charged? I tend to forget incidents like that because they've been so almost surreal that they become quite difficult to uh, they become quite they don't sit front of mind until you think back and you think well, that was a really amazing experience I had and that was one of them so that was my favorite rhino experience I think Liz and there may have been a number of others I'm trying to think of the first time that I saw a rhino on foot at Ngala where I first walked and every every morning and afternoon I would go out with the head ranger who was a fantastic naturalist and still is a fantastic fantastic naturalist and um, he was learning to track at the time and we didn't spend a huge amount of time in the vehicle we did a lot of tracking of rhino and anything else that we could find but I remember going on a rhino tracking expedition with him once and crossing I mean we must have walked I don't know five or six kilometers so it's not a huge distance but it's quite far and eventually we spotted him and I remember the first time that uh, we, the success of the track for the first time, if you like, and how wonderful it made me feel. And again, when people say, tell us about your bush adventures, you kind of think, well, charging animals and, you know, capers where you've had to get away from things. But it's been those small, subtle moments where you've had a kind of communion with nature that are the ones that when I stop and think about it, that I remember very clearly. And I guess the next uh, one would be the first time I tracked a rhino on my own for the first time. And it was very, a rhino is a great thing to track because it drags its feet, as I've told many of you before. And I remember that one very hot summer's afternoon, it had, had been raining, so there were lots of pans and there were bits of mud around. I walked down to a dam area with another trainee 
And then we found the track of Orion and we followed it. And we weren't kind of expecting to find him, we just thought we'll see if we can. And slowly, slowly we, we managed to track him because he'd, he'd rolled in a lot of mud and so he'd left little drops of mud all over the place and we'd go from one rubbing post and check if it was fresh or not, we'd find a tick in the mud, then we'd go across to the next rubbing post and check if there was a tick and then we'd kind of lose the track for a while and then we'd see where he scuffed his foot and then we'd move along a little bit and we'd see a little bit of mud dropped on the floor there and we'd move along and eventually we found him grazing uh, in the green grass of the late summer or the early summer actually and it was just the most satisfying feeling in the world. Now I believe that...